Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the Team Olympus YouTube channel and the vlog. We are going on a road trip. Who's we? Okay, so as Joe tastefully told everybody, uh, it's just me going on this one. Uh, I am heading out to California, uh, going to go to Big Bear. There, <laughs> Big Bear. Uh, I'll be heading out to Big Bear in the morning. I'm uh, going to be picking up some new projects. So I'm going to take you guys along with me and we'll have some fun. First thing we got to do is we are going to do a little bit of maintenance on the truck to make sure everything's good to go. And as always, we want to inspect it. I'm not hauling anything out to California, but I'll be hauling a big trailer back. And since I'm not there, I need you guys to watch out for him, for me, please. Take care of him. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, so we got the truck in. It's a, for those who don't know, it's a 2006 uh, Ram 2500 with some 3500 upgrades, as well as the complete drive line is pretty much all brand new. Uh, but I have put probably five or 10,000 miles on it since I've owned it. So we're going to do an oil change, make sure all that's fresh, and uh, just a quick once over everything. I'm going to clean out the inside. It's always good to clean out before you go on a road trip. Is it dirty? Yeah. Cool. The oil change. What'd you do? I mean, what did I do? Oh, I got that thing out of there. Why did you take it out? That was a mess. I had to pop the bumper cover off because it was wedged up in here behind it. So what's the story with this? Uh, why don't you ask Daniel that question? I don't know anything. Yeah, figures. Nah, I hit a deer a while back and <laughs> there's still some hair in there. But oh, I never noticed how dented in that was. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know, it was that bad. So uh, it's almost ready. You know what we should do real quick while we we're doing this? Do we should throw some LED headlights in this. Uh, yeah, we can throw some oil. It's just right there. Wouldn't be that hard to get to. Yeah. I think it'd make a big difference. So. I think we can probably do it. Let's do that real quick while these we're are, working on these stuff. These are aftermarket, so they look like anyway. Yeah, that's a uh, good reflector housing, so it should do well. Yeah. Well, as with everything, right before a trip, nothing ever goes as planned, and we had a couple hiccups. Uh, so it is a lot later than I had initially wanted to get done tonight. But anyways, truck's ready to go. I am going to go get some sleep, and I will see you all in the morning. Good morning. It's time to get on the road. Heading out to Las Vegas today. Going to stop there, and uh, going to meet someone tomorrow morning so I'll stay there tonight and then finish out the last couple hundred miles to the LA area tomorrow morning so let's get on the road it's got me oh traveling with my little buddy here this is Kirk what up Kirk get the fist bump we actually have a uh, little pet hedgehog of our own And this is Kirk, he's traveling with me. So this is my travel buddy. Well, we're making our way up over the Rockies, coming up on the Eisenhower Tunnel. And there's some snow. Roads aren't too bad. Uh, a little icy though, that's the only thing I don't like. It's never fun, but uh, trucking along. Bunch of traffic slowdowns. It's not bad for that dude. Must have spun out and it's been there a while. Okay, I officially need to get some wipers. These ones are horrible. This is horrid. I had to pull over and spray some water on the windshield to get it cleaned off. So we'll be stopping here at the bottom of the summit. Okay, good news. Coming down the pass from the Eisenhower Tunnel, the roads were much better. Bad news is I'm stuck. Uh, Vail Pass, apparently two semis crashed, and there's literally beer all over the highway on I-70. A beer truck, I guess, hit another truck, and the entire truck went all over the highway, so I-70 is closed. So I am currently in Silverthorne, and I guess I'm going to hang out here for a little bit and 
we'll see what happens. Okay, so just finished up at AutoZone. Um, got the wipers on, wiper fluid. This is a surprisingly small uh, wiper reservoir. Um, projections give me about an hour and a half for the highway to open, so I'm gonna go find something to do, I guess, I don't know. Wandered over to Target. And got these giant icicles hanging off. It's kind of cool. Well, according to the Colorado Department of Transportation website, the highway is now open and the cameras show traffic moving. So well, let's go see. The news is we're on the west side of Vail Pass. So that's something. Uh, roads are definitely chunky, but making progress. 30 miles an hour at a time. Okay, take it back. I'm doing like 20. Well, I'm pretty sure this was the accident that closed the highway. That's horrible. And now it looks like he's stuck. Oh, yeah. Miller Lite. That's a lot of beer. Well, we're officially past the accident now, but got a little ways to go. I'd probably say another hour before we're anywhere back to normal highway driving. Yay, we're finally doing the speed limit again. We are uh, coming on the downside of the Rockies now uh, in an area called Eagle, just past Vail. Next up after this is Glenwood Springs. Good old Glenwood Canyon. It's a nice place to drive through. Well, we finally made Utah. Holy moly, that took a long time. Well, me and Kirk are tired. Um, we didn't make it to Vegas. Like right at 150 miles from Vegas, somewhere around there. So we're gonna stop here for the night, uh, get to Vegas in the morning. So I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning. Had a good night's sleep. Now it's time to get back on the road. Well, we made it to Vegas. We're on the outskirts. There's the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Can't wait to be back there for LS Fest in May. That'll be a lot of fun. Well, it's safe to say the weather is much nicer here. I'm enjoying the warm weather at our first stop in Las Vegas at FOA Shop Absorbers. I've got to pick up some springs, uh, some uniballs, and uh, a couple other things, and go over some stuff with them. But we are here. Well, that took a little while, but we got everything we needed taken care of. And now it's time to get to California. We are in California. Tried to get the sign, but it came up pretty quick. Something that's pretty cool right here on the Nevada state line. They've got this big solar array that generates power. You can kind of see it out there. It's a tower with, uh, it's got a liquid that basically all those solar panels around it heat it up and circulate the liquid and it generates power off the sun. It's kind of interesting. Looks like a big prism tower or something out there. But I guarantee you. All right, so made it to uh, California where we're going, switch trucks. Got Corey and his missus here, and now we're heading down the valley to NRG to go pick up Preston seats. Oh, more driving. All right, we're here in the uh, Irwindale area, made it to our next stop. NRG. Ooh, they even got it on the building too. Let's go inside. Waiting. Uh, Getting the stuff for Preston. Got all sorts of good stuff here. Corey's drooling at the catalog. What'd you find now? Uh, oh, the neck and pillow cushion. <laughs> you know, you got. I got a booster seat. <laughs> you have that uh, foam in there. Dude, that booster seat for the business. They got chairs everywhere. It's a little slippery for what we do. <laughs> Does that light up? It'd be good for oh, it lights up. Yeah. Very cool projector. And we got the office chair. That's their new Prisma series. Doing some special stuff. Uh, we're taking off from NRG now. Unfortunately, though, because I got here late. Wow, that's really close. Uh, because I got here late, uh, they couldn't get a hold of the marketing guy who's out at Willow Springs Raceway doing some racing out there. So they're going to have to ship Preston's products. So no biggie. We'll get her figured out. And now I'll have to go meet some other people. There's a Miller factory. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm laughing because earlier in this trip, 
There were cans all over the highway. I wonder if they know. All right, well, we've had an eventful day today. So many errands, and I know that you guys are waiting. So I'm gonna get some rest tonight, grab a hotel, and first thing in the morning, I'm gonna show off our new projects. I'm definitely excited to show you. So I'm going to bed, and we'll see you right now. All right, so we are here in California, and my hat is completely crooked there. Maybe it's just the angle, I don't know. But we're picking up some projects, so I'm excited to show these to you. There's also some other crazy stuff here that I'm gonna show you guys on video. So without further ado, let's take a look at the projects. All righty, project number one. This is a, uh, I think he said a 41 Willys. Uh, this is when Ford made them. And we are going to actually take the body off. We talked about it, and the only thing we're actually using is the body. Um, so I'm gonna be building a custom frame. This is going to get slammed to the ground, and then it's going to get some big tires, big power, and it's gonna be a burnout car. We're excited about that. Uh, we got a couple different LS options we're talking about, uh, either a six liter, five seven or something, uh, but this is going to be done, and we're gonna do it pretty quick so that it's ready for LS Fest and Cletus and Cars. Um, so this is project number one. It's gonna be cool. We're gonna be using a combination of jerry can and then I gotta find it. It's somewhere around here. Uh, I don't know where he has it. But he's got this cool old, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if I wanna use the word for it, but we'll just call it weaponry. Uh, we're gonna be using that for the fuel tank. So as soon as we find that, I'll get that on video. So this guy's gonna be sick. Um, we're not molesting the body at all. We're gonna use all the factory body mounts. Um, yeah. We want to keep it looking as vintage and old as possible. We just want it slammed to the ground and big tires wide sticking out the side of the fenders. And um, I don't know what tires we're using yet. Probably like a 35 or something. Uh, but that should be pretty sweet. All right, so that's project number one. Project number two. Let's swipe over here. This guy this is going to be a blast. This is a 55 Willys. It's got a 5.3 in it and a Muncie 4 speed. And we are going to take this and turn it into a 3,700 Jeep speed. Long arms on the back, trailing arms. Um, be pulling a lot of travel. We're going to do a full IFS conversion in the front. And I'm actually thinking I'm going to keep this kind of random color scheme. I don't know what's going on with it, but I like it. So we're gonna pull the glass out. Um, and we're gonna try and retain the look as much as possible. I've seen a few of these done. Um, but yeah, we wanna, I, I don't know. I've seen a few of these done where they don't necessarily retain the look. So we want to keep that classic styling, but with the modern suspension, um, we'll probably do a uh, Holly Sniper on the 350. Uh, but yeah, this thing, I'm excited about this one. I, I don't know which one I'm more excited about, the burnout car or this guy, but they're going to be absolutely fun. And it's, uh, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> so IFS front, trailing arms rear, big shocks, a lot of travel. And we're going to also with this build, we want to do it as budget as possible. Not because we're cheap, but because we want to show what you can make. Oh, that's a crazy rear bumper on that thing. <laughs> I didn't even see that. California Vintage 56 plates. That's crazy. Um, but we want to do this to show what you can do on a budget and kind of just show, hey, if you want to race in the off-road, there's ways you can do it. So we're going to keep this very budget, and it is going to be a blast. So these guys are coming home with me today. However... Um, we ended up talking about it and something else is coming home with me today. This guy. So for those of you that don't know, this is actually my previous Ultra 4. I don't want to say old because I just built it. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we took it to Ellis Fest, tore it up, had a blast there. And uh, Corey liked it and he wanted it. So... 
we made a deal happen and he ended up owning it and we've had some fun with it it's been racing been out to SEMA and a couple other things it's got a uh, 5.7 supercharged with a torque storm supercharger and it definitely moves it's uh it's a wild beast but there's a bunch of things that need to be done to it and modified <coughs> excuse me so it's going to come back with me and we're going to do a ton of stuff from custom shocks uh, i think we're going to do a custom fuel cell different meth tank um we're just going to kind of refine some of it and make it all perfect and he uh, had stepped up to the 4400 class, which he runs these bigger 40 inch tires versus the 37s. And those five lug studs are not liking it. He's had the wheel come off a few times in races. And most recently he was out at the Hoonigan burn yard as there are literally no studs in there. How is this wheel even held on? Kind of just the hub? Yeah, at the <laughs> I was looking at it, I was like, there is no way this wheel is supposed to be held on. <laughs> it came off and the rotor itself's a little beat up and yeah need some work but we're gonna convert this to eight lug and that should help a bit on a few things so these are three of the projects we'll be working on over the next few months and moving quick on along with the other stuff we have um but in the meantime there's some other cool stuff here got this uh little toyota here looks like somebody started doing a uh, pre-runner conversion on it oh it's got coilovers it's got some glass looks like some longer flat springs probably rides pretty smooth but i don't know <laughs> it probably needs a lot of work that'll be cool but this guy check this out oh i i this is just a big toy that's all it is <laughs> it's literally just a big Tonka truck, fully built. He said he built it with an 80s theme just to have something to just play around with in the desert. And <laughs> it's like this thing's crazy. <laughs> I feel like this should have like some stacks coming out of the hood or something. Just I don't know. It's almost like it reminds me of the big mud trucks, but it's definitely an 80s truck. <laughs> What would you do with this thing if you had it? Looks like that. This is a 205? Yeah. That's a big two. That's a big T case. A lot going on. Body lift. And... <laughs> that paint job, though, that makes it. <laughs> That's cool. It's actually a wrap. That's a wrap? No. Oh, okay. Still cool. I thought it was a paint job at first, so good wrap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a giant radiator. It's got a nice, it's got a nice turbo 400, or a nice 400. Does it? Oh, okay. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> There you go, that'd be fun. This is a transaxle buggy. I actually don't know what engine this is. It's not the K24, it's the one right before that. The 18. Oh, yeah. Is it a B18? No. Like the Integra? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't know all the differences. I'm sure you know the guys that do that can call it out just by looking at the valve cover, just like we know LS is. I but... don't know nothing about it. Same little thing. Yeah, it's, this is a full transaxle buggy. It's really interesting um, because well, that track bar is weird. There's a couple different bars that are weird. Let's see if I can get in here. But transaxle buggies. Don't get shit powder covered. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about <laughs> This powder coating job was not very good. <laughs> um, but basically on the transaxle, it gets converted to a yoke. And then that's your front drive shaft. And then that's your rear drive shaft. The only issue you run into is because they're both spinning the same way on like a transfer case, you've got to flip your front axle so it spins backwards technically. So, is this a, was that a Yoda axle or something? Is that a nine inch? That's a nine inch. Yeah. Nine inch, 
Yeah. That's what it looks like to me. You said this thing's turbo? Yep. How big is the turbo? <laughs> like the size of a hamster. Little guy? Yeah. Like a little sob turbo or something? Yeah. Ain't nothing special. But Good. yeah, Huge. should be something. Might have to build something like this in the future. These aren't that expensive to build. But this is for rock crawling and just slow crawling. You're not going to be doing any go fast racing. But Preston, you would like this. Looks like somebody started a Baja bug. Check out this cage. It's a little different than kind of how we did it. Yeah, ours is welded. <laughs> it's probably not finished. Uh, looks like this one was started. Interesting how it fits up there. They did a round hoop up front. And obviously it's not 12 inches wider like Preston's. But it would definitely be a fun one. Make a Baja bug or something. Go off roading in. This guy's fun. <laughs> Corey said, hey, I got another bug. I forgot. This one is a. Uh, Definitely a little more worse for wears. There's no back end. Another one. I think it, he said it's more of a parts one, but see, Preston, bugs are cool. Just like that, the engine for the burnout car just showed up. It's a LS, uh, LQ9, LQ4 with a 4L80. All right, we got the engine and tranny loaded, so this guy's all strapped in. Next up, go start loading up the trailer. Loading up, we already got the Ultra 4 on there and hooked up. Now we're putting the wheelies. We're putting it backwards because we want the engine uh, with this trailer set up to be predominantly over the axle. And if we do this, it'll put the butt more up there in the engine right in that area. So, should be good. Alright, let's give it a shot. Corey's got this tow truck thing that's making life easy. So we did some math on weights on where we want it. <laughs> and the wheelies just tucked right up under the Ultra 4. That's awesome. It's, uh, <laughs> I love it. Got a lot of the weight over the axle where we wanted it here. So the only thing left to do is we're going to take the body off the wheelies and put it here. A few more things and we're good to start strapping down. Yep, right down. Well, we got the front end off, taking it piece by piece. Like I said, we're only using the body, so we're gonna leave the frame, axles, and pretty much everything but the body here. Uh, we got all the bolts underneath, and now we've got to uh, get a bunch of the shifters and different stuff, but getting there. Oh, there goes the hood. Well, we about got the body off. Using the tow truck. It's getting there. Something's stuck though. We're trying to figure it out and it doesn't want to let go. So we're going to keep wiggling and see what happens. Oh my. Well, it's off. Uh, now we got to wiggle it over there. It's just kind of spinning off in its own little world. There's the body. All right, hey, you want to back that trailer up? Yeah. We can just back it up right underneath that. I'll lower it. Should be good. That looks good, dude. Alright, so we just gotta pick it up a little bit. Shimmy, shimmy. <laughs> That's not what I expected. It just kind of plopped on there. Well, there's no other way. Are we gonna turn it? Yeah, we can turn it. I got hot legs. Why don't, uh. Yeah, let's get. We'll figure it out. We are loaded. Um, took a little while, but everything's strapped down and got everything there. So, it's so cool how this sits up there. I love it. It's just tucked in together. So, now we're going to add a little air to the airbags. Honestly, the truck's not 
sitting bad um, but we want to air the bags up make sure the tires are up we're gonna do a few checks and that's gonna be it we'll be getting on out of here oh man it just got dark oh yeah <laughs> i can't find a spot to get light that's all right there we go well i'm out of here we got everything loaded i am gonna hit the road and go driving i don't know a few hours i didn't get much sleep last night that was officially the worst hotel experience i've ever had first room they put me in i swear it was a herd of elephants in there just stomping around and then uh after that they moved me to another room and people kept kicking on my door i don't know if they thought it was someone else in there so they moved me to another room and this morning at 7 a.m i had some lady just beating on the door putting her finger on the uh eye hole whatever you call it where you look at and i don't know what that was all about and called the front desk again and uh, this is going to be a crappy day. I'll stay at the Motel 6 and where am I? I don't know. Hesperia, Victorville. So I'm not going to drive too far and take it slow on the way back. So, uh, yeah. So those are the projects we have going on. Hope you enjoyed the road trip. I'll keep you guys posted on the way back. And uh, Corey will probably be coming out in a couple Sounds weeks. Good. And whew, we got a lot of work to do. Uh. So. I'm going to hit the road, yeah, dude. Yeah, a couple wheelies and a couple ultra fours, bud. <laughs> ultra four and a couple wheelies. <laughs> looks like you're going on a hillbilly, like, redneck uh, with paycheck kind of thing. I have no idea. There's a lot of random stuff on this There's a lot of random load. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you got a Ford, you got a wheelies, you got an uh, ultra four, and you got a Cummins. And a Chevy. Uh, oh, yeah, you got a yeah. Chevy <laughs> engine in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of stuff. Well, enjoy All your right. trip. We'll catch you guys miles. next time. This one for you. Right. This one for you.